In this video, we're going to make a pixelated shader in Shadergraph. We're going to pixelate our sprite and easily animate it through code. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is what we want to make. Over here is my character looking perfectly normal. Now by pressing a button, and there you go, my character becomes completely pixelated. So the sprite is now made up of very blocky pixels. And by pressing another button, there you go, we can animate the pixelate amount and now it goes back to normal. So click, pixelated, and back to normal. Here is the shader inspector where we can see our pixelated amount. So at zero, the sprite has no pixelation, so it looks perfectly normal. And as we increase, it becomes more and more pixelated. So by just dragging the slider, we can make it more or less pixelated. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, here we are in our empty scene. Let's begin by making our shader. So we simply go into create a new shader, go into the 2D renderer and make a sprite lit graph. Let's call this our pixelate shader. All right, so here we are in shader graph and we have our sprite lit master node. Now for starters, we need a texture. So let's make a new property of type texture 2D and we're going to call this our main text. Okay, here it is with the reference underscore main text. This is the exact name you need to use for the primary texture. Now we drag the texture onto our board and now we need to sample it. So we get a sample node and we just pass in the RGB onto the color node. And here right click and select the quad. Okay, there's our basic texture. So let's test it out, go up here to save it. And now we make a new material. Here we have our material and we just select in here onto shader graphs and select our pixelated shader. All right, there it is with our texture selected. So let's test. And yep, there's the character looking perfectly normal. All right, so far so good. Now let's make our pixelated shader. Now, in order to do that, what we need to do is play around with the UV values. So here on the sample texture node, you can see that it takes a UV input and we can also create a node simply called UV. So this holds our UV. And as you can see by the colors, the X and Y are constantly increasing. So for example, we can use the preview node in order to easily see the values. So the preview node, which takes an input and then shows it in here what it's receiving. So before that, we can add a split node in order to split our RGBA into separate. And then in here, you can see the red going from black to white, so from zero to one. Then you can see the green going from down to up. So the R is increasing along the X axis and the G along the Y axis. And these are all normalized values. So this is zero and this is one. Now, if we just pass our basic UV onto the UV node, there you go, nothing happens since it's receiving perfectly normal UVs. So before we pass it in there, we're going to modify something in here. Now, in order to have our pixelated effect, what we're going to do is make sure that this gradient isn't perfectly smooth, but rather it has very discrete values. And the way we're going to do that is by multiplying, then flooring and dividing. Okay, so let's see how we do that. First, we go up here and we create a new vector one, which is essentially a float. And we're going to call this our pixel, pixelated amount. Okay, so here we have our property. Let's drag it onto the board, all right. And now here, the first thing we're going to do is take our UV and multiply it by this pixelated amount. So we make a multiply node. We multiply this one onto this one. And now, for example, we can use the preview in order to see what it's doing. So we put the preview in there and let's look at the R and there you go. So right now it's fully in black because we're multiplying by zero, but let's try multiplying by 10. And there you go. Right now it's a lot more intense since again, pure white represents one. So all the values above one are going to show as white. So by doing this, essentially we made it go from zero to 10. So after we multiply, then we can start getting some jagged values by utilizing a floor node. So floor, in case you don't know, it's a simple mathematical operation. It essentially discards the decimal values. So for example, 1.7 becomes just one. So first we multiply everything by 10. Then we take this output and we floor all of it. And there you go, right now you can already see the discrete values. And then let's put the output into our split so we can preview it. And just like that, you can already kind of see the effect. So over here we have an area that is full on zero and over here an area that is full on above one. So in here we already have a bunch of discrete values going from over here we have zero, then here we have one and two and three and so on. 
but we can't see it since in here we only see normalized values. So after we multiply and we floor it, then we can simply divide it in order to go back to a zero to one scale. So we add a divide node and we're going to divide this output by the same as our pixelated amount. And just like that, you can already see the UV having some very distinct segments. And if we pass it on to our preview node, yep, there you go, exactly like that. So essentially we are splitting our UV node into 10 different segments. And now if we pass this along into the UV node, and there you go, you can already see the effect. Now obviously 10 is way too small, so let's increase it by quite a bit. And if I put out 100, yep, there you go, the shape is visible, but it is indeed pixelated. All right, awesome. So let's test it out just like this. And yep, there's our character looking very pixelated. Great. All right, now let's make the pixelate amount to slider so we can easily change it. So here we just go into our properties and change the mode from default into a slider. Set the minimum at zero and maximum, let's say at 200. Okay, let's see. Okay, here it is with our inspector. So if I increase the slider, yep, there you go, less pixelated and I decrease and there you go, you can see the nice effect. All right, awesome. Now the name should probably be backwards, meaning when pixelated amount is at zero, it should not be pixelated at all. And when at maximum, it should be fully pixelated. Also, the value really should be normalized, so just going from zero to one. So let's do both of those. So here in our shader, let's define a constant for our max pixelated amount. So we do a vector one and let's put it at 200. Now you could also expose this if you wanted, but in this case, making it a local constant will do just fine. And now on the pixelated amount, let's make it go from zero just to one. So let's default it at 0.5. And now before we do any of this, we first multiply our pixelated amount by our constant. So this one by this one, yep. And now it's this output that we use both in here and then on our divide node, yep. All right, so this should be working with normalized values. Now in order to flip it, over here we can add a one minus node so this one does exactly as it sounds like. It takes one minus a certain value. So we take our pixelated amount and we do a one minus node and then we apply it to our multiplication. And yep, just like that. So now for here on the pixelated amount, we can go from zero all the way to one. And yep, just like that. So let's see. Okay, here we are with our character and our pixelated amount slider. As you can see, it goes from zero all the way to one. So at zero, we have almost no pixelation. And if we move it past one, there you go, it becomes insanely pixelated. So just like this, we have a nice slider working with a normalized value. All right, awesome. Now over here on zero, you can still see some pixelation. The reason for that is because even when we set it to zero, we're using our constants. So in this case, just 200 samples. So one way to solve this would be to simply increase this to a very large number. So that would solve it, but it wouldn't really be very pretty. So another approach we can take is to add some nice logic. So here in our shader, let's do a test to see if the pixelated amount is zero. So in order to do a simple if, we can add a compare node. So we do a comparison between our pixelated amount and zero. So this one outputs a Boolean. And then we can also create a branch node. So this one, as you can see, takes a Boolean and then has a true and false, which comes out here on the output. So this is essentially an if else. So if the Boolean over here is true, it will return the true. If it's false, it will return the false. So when this one is true, it means that the pixelated amount is zero and we do not want to pixelate. So when it is true, we want to output the original UV. So this one in here. And when it is false, we want to output the pixelated UV, which is this one in here. So now we move it all the way in here. Okay, so that's it. Then we take the output from this branch and we pass it on to the UV. And yep, just like this. So here we're using two very nice nodes to work with Boolean logic. All right, this should be working. Let's test. Okay, so here we are and let's drag the slider all the way down to zero. And yep, there you go with zero. It has absolutely no pixelation whatsoever. It is receiving the exact perfect original UV. And as I increase just a tiny bit, there you go, pixelation becomes visible. So at zero, no pixelation. As soon as I increase, the effect gets applied. All right, awesome. So now when we have zero, we have a perfect sprite. Now let's see how we can animate this value to play around with it. And over here, I have this script. As you can see, it's extremely tiny, only 30 lines long. And what we have is a material reference for our material. And then on key press, we are setting a target pixelated amount. So here, let's put a maximum of 0.7. 
So when we press T, we're going to set the pixel in amount to lerp onto towards 0.7. And when we press the Y, it will go back to zero, which is essentially no pixelation. So here we're just playing around with these two float values. And in order to apply it to our material, this is what we do. We go into the material, we call set float, we pass in the reference name, and then we set our float amount. So there it is, a very simple script. Let's see. Okay, so here we are, and yep, there's our character looking completely normal. And now I press this button, and there you go, it becomes completely pixelated with a nice animation. And now I press this button, and there you go, it goes back to normal. So press, pixelate, press, and back to normal. So here we have our nice pixelated effect being animated through a nice script. And again, here it is in shader graph. All we're doing is playing around with the UV and doing some simple math in order to get some fixed value increment. And with that, we get some nice blocky pixels. So here is the effect again. And as you can see, it looks great. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.